Yo, what's up? It's Benjamin Seda, aka Base Zeus's manager. We got the camera crew here ready today. We got me ready. Today, Base Zeus himself is gonna come here and he's gonna do a live pickup. He's actually gonna come out and pick up some of these crazy, beautiful girls that are out here. We're in Washington Square Park, New York City, Manhattan. It's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be epic. You guys are not ready for this one. One hour later. Where the hell is this guy? He said he was supposed to be here already. This dude is literally always late, like never on time. Whatever, he said he'd be here, I trust him, he'll be here. <sighs> Voicemail again, damn it. Literally been here for two hours, he's still not here. I, I don't know what the fuck we're gonna do. A few moments later. <sighs> Alright, he's, he's not coming, I don't know where, where the fuck he's at. We can just cut it and we'll reschedule when he's here and like we can do the same location, we'll just bring him again. And, Wait, uh, dude. Why don't you just do it? Me? Yeah, man. You can definitely do it. Me, like, go out and, like, do the, like pick up the girls? Yeah. I mean, I am Zeus's manager. All right, I know, exa I know exactly how I'm going to do this. Can you, can you give me your bracelets, though? I'm going to need them. Nice. Tell you more. Excuse me. Do you, Sorry. Do you want to play a really quick game for a really quick kiss? No? Okay. All right. Excuse me. Do you want to play a really quick game for a really quick... Me? Do you want to play a really quick game for a really quick kiss? No, I'm good. I'm talking to my boyfriend. Tell him I said hi. Excuse me. Do you want to play a really quick game for a really quick kiss? No, thank you. No? no? Okay. okay. All right. Well, that didn't work. You can have the bracelets back. Maybe those videos really are fake. Wait, but I have a friend, Connor Murphy. All he does is he just goes up to girls and takes his shirt off and that always works. I'll just, I'll just go do that. Hey, what's up? I, I like, I like your, uh, I, li I like your, okay, I'm just gonna. Oh. Can I get no, your, what, what, can I get your number? No, no. All right, well. That didn't work. Um, Connor makes it look so easy. I guess I have to be like 50 pounds more jacked. Wait, dude, why don't you just pick up girls like you normally do? I didn't even think of that. Yeah, sure, all right, we'll do that. Future Ben here, it is the next day. I actually did, all jokes aside, go out and actually do a successful pickup. I'm gonna show you that interaction right now and break it down. I'm gonna show you literally in action using all of the Zeus tactics and techniques, how they worked, what was going through my head during the interaction and how I was able to make the interaction go successfully. So let's go ahead and watch that right now. Fuck, I'm gonna have to go all the way around for this one. <laughs> oh my God. All right, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say, but I think something. So you actually notice when I open the set, I'm behind the fence of where the actual little park is and I was hesitant to go open that set because she was, you know, I had to go all the way around, climb a fence, like do go through all of these obstacles. And a lot of guys would use that as an excuse, like, oh, I have to go all the way around, that's too much work, I don't wanna do it. And reality, it's a bullshit excuse. Um, and you also notice as I go up to do the initial approach, I'm nervous and walking up to her saying, I have no idea what I'm gonna say, I don't know what I'm gonna say, but I'm saying this as I'm walking up to her, I'm not using any of these Excuse of, oh, I don't know what to say. I'm just gonna show up there, do what I'm supposed to do and approach and open it and see what happens. Even though it might be awkward, even though it might be a train wreck, none of these are valid excuses. Just because I don't feel like doing something or just because it's difficult doesn't mean I'm not gonna go do it. Excuse me, are you reading uh, Fifty Shades of Grey? I am not. No. What, what are you reading? I am reading Intimacy and Solitude. That's almost as close as Fifty <laughs> Shades of Grey. <laughs> What's your name? Benjamin. Benjamin, nice to meet you. What? So you'll notice instead of just opening by saying, hey, you're cute, I wanted to come meet you, I'm Benjamin. I actually did what Zeus often recommends in the videos, which is opening by making a comment of something going around or something that's within the context of, of the situation, right? So she's reading a book um, and I, I didn't even know what the book was because she obviously had it open. Uh, and, I, and I just went up and I, and I made a, the joke, are you reading Fifty Shades of Grey? Um, normally, if there's not really a lot of things going around, you could open with like, I thought you were pretty and I wanted to come meet you or I, I wanted to come see if you were as interesting or intriguing as you seem. 
Um, the benefit of opening with a contextual comment or making a comment about something that's going around is that it's way more plausible, it's way more believable, it's way more organic than just coming up and saying, hey, I thought you were hot, I'm, I'm, I'm here, to, here to hit on you, um, which is not always bad, uh, but it makes it more organic, it makes the interaction more organic and a little bit more engaging than if it was just sort of a direct compliment, which is also a good thing. Um, it's definitely better to approach and give a direct compliment as opposed to pussy out and not approach. Um, so yeah, let's let's keep it rolling. Okay. Is intimacy and solitude about? I, uh, I imagine it's about intimacy, intimacy and, so and solitude. Yeah, you nailed it. It's yeah. I mean, that's basically it. What what brings you what brings you to this book? What um, drew you to it? Are you in need of some intimacy and solitude? Because <laughs> it sounds like you can't be intimate unless you have a person to be intimate with. Well, see, I have the intimacy, but I need the solitude as well. So, so is it intimacy and solitude separately or is it both because you can't really have both well it is both though because you can how do you how how can you what are you intimate with yourself is no, that like no, a no. is that like a masturbation no, reference no 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 okay so so here you see that i playfully joke about why she's reading a book about intimacy and ask if she's in need of some intimacy so that's immediately me magnifying, which is a tactic Zeus has talked about before. Magnifying is basically where you playfully exaggerate or playfully misinterpret what she's saying and turn it into something that's sexual or something super ridiculous to keep the conversation fun. And it's a form, it's like the most basic form of flirting and or teasing. Magnifying is really good because it's a really good way to organically sexualize the interaction because it's based on what's going on. You're just sort of magnifying it into something uh, that fits your frame a little bit more in sort of the direction you want the interaction to go. Um, and it feels more natural when you do it this way as opposed to just bringing up sexual topics in a way, like out of the blue, um, or in a way that's sort of uncalibrated. And you see when I mention is, is intimacy and solitude, is that like a masturbation reference? That's me magnifying it even more. It's basically me again playfully misinterpreting the context of the interaction and, and what's going on even more. Um, and by doing this, I'm able to create sexual undertones in the conversation what from the start, a, a, you know, one minute in, less than one minute in, it looks like. Um, now, there is, yes, a bit of luck involved in the fact that she was reading a book about intimacy. I opened with, are you reading Fifty Shades of Grey? Um, which would have been enough uh, to, to, to sort of plant those sexual undertones and make jokes about that moving forward. But uh, I did get a little bit lucky here, but hey, that's, that's, that's part of pickup, that's part of game. That, and I use that luck to my advantage throughout the interaction. I, I'm in a relationship, but I also have to like maintain independence, you know? Tell me about that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you like start relying on people when you're with them for a while, so. In what way? So you see there, I said, tell me about that. Uh, that's like a textbook qualifier. So qualifying is basically, uh, Zeus has talked about this in past videos before, qualifying is basically where you ask the girl uh, super broad, open-ended questions. Things like, tell me about that, what's your story, what's the most exciting thing going on in your life right now. You're basically asking the girl to qualify and almost prove herself to you. When you ask questions like this, it makes her invest more into the interaction, into the conversation, and invest more to you, because then she has to explain herself and the more the longer that the interaction goes on and the more she's explaining herself to you, uh, the more investment you get on her end and more participation. And these are good just to sort of build her interest and engagement in the conversation and have her feel more invested in what's going on as opposed to you leading the entire thing. Like, the, and get, yes, I know you're thinking like, are we about to have a deep talk in the middle of, are you about to have a stranger deep talk in the middle of <laughs> West 4th Street? This is happening. This is New York. Get used to it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Um, so what I did there, uh, I, I know I'm cutting a lot, but the beginning is the, probably the, the most important part of the interaction, and that's why I sort of I did all of these things. But what I did there when I said, are you about to talk to a stranger in the middle of Washington Square Park? Yes, you are. It's normal. Don't worry. This is happening. So I do this with a lot of girls I just meet because when you randomly approach girls, sometimes the context can seem a little bit strange or wacky, like, oh, this guy just came over and talked to me like he's obviously hitting on me, um, which is not a bad frame, but you don't want to sort of make it seem like you're there just to hit on her, you're already balled in, you're sort of sold. When you're doing this, when you say like, are you about to talk to a stranger, you're sort of contextualizing the conversation and making it more normal, as opposed to a little bit strange. This also signals to her that I'm not creepy, like I'm normal, I'm, I'm a social guy, like I have 
social awareness of what's going around, going on. Uh, the fact that I acknowledge, yes, it's a little bit strange or a little bit wacky that I'm that I'm a stranger talking to her, like having this deep talk, totally unsolicited. Uh, but just making that distinction, like yes, it, this is a little weird, but it's fine. Like you know, whatever. It's cool. Like me being normal and cool about it uh, shows that I'm normal and cool within social situations, um, which shows confidence, shows she can trust me, um, and it shows that you know the social interaction is a little more organic. Because remember, game or pickup or dating in general, it's not about like being, trying to manipulate the girl or using all these trick to, tricks and tactics uh, to manipulate her into getting you to like her. Um, it's really about communicating to her that you're normal, you're not a threat to her, uh, that you're a guy who can actually add value to her life um, and that you're a cool guy with a lot to offer. So when you show this understanding of, of the social situation and, and you know that you're a social not normal guy, it makes her way more comfortable with you and it, and it makes her trust you more because the last thing you want to do is, is make girls feel uncomfortable because one, they won't like you and they won't want to continue talking to you. Um, and two, like, come on, you don't, wanna, you, you don't really want to be going around making anyone feel uncomfortable. You're going to end up getting locked up. So providing context in this way, um, in a way that's funny, um, in a way that's socially acceptable is important to keep her comfortable and, and build that trust. I actually did this in an earlier set when I got an insta date with a girl where you know I went up to her, talked to her for a few minutes and we immediately went on a date right there. Um, I'll show a clip of that now, just me saying, yes, you're talking to Sharna as we walked onto the date. Excuse me, hey, what's up? I'm sorry? You looked intriguing, I wanted to come meet you. Hi. I'm Benjamin. Hi. Is it close by? I might need to grab a Gatorade. You wanna to walk together? Yeah. Right. Let's do it. Rand walking together with random yeah. strangers. I hope you don't roofie me. And now back to the other clip. I don't know. Like when you are with someone for a long time, and like of course you start expecting them to be there and like do the, the things that they always do. The thing that they always do. Yeah. That sounds like that sounds like something you'd write in like a poem. Oh. Yeah, okay. The thing that they always do. Do you? Um, who's like that basic ass? person who writes those poems it's like modern uh rupee car yes do you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel like those are like like with a little illustration yeah i feel like it's almost like a meme because like they're like so corny <laughs> and like like so fake deep are you are you a fan of rupee car not really no <laughs> who are you a fan of um, aside from uh who, who writes this i don't even know stephanie dowrick stephanie dowrick yeah is it sexist to say that of course a woman wrote about intimacy and solitude <laughs> Uh, I guess it's not sexist because it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know how interested a man would be in that, but I um, I'm definitely interested in the intimacy, and I definitely have the solitude. But mm -hmm. I don't know how they correlate. Is this like fiction or is it nonfiction? Oh no, no, it's nonfiction. It is like. So what are you learning? There. Teach, teach me. Um, I'm learning that you need to be in touch with yourself before you can properly love anyone else. And you always have to be in contact with that. Are you in contact and in touch with yourself? Uh, for the most part, yeah, I would say so. But, I don't know, I feel like I don't really know what that means. So uh, another important thing to note here, two important things to note here is one, my body language. Um, I'm not sitting down next to her, which I definitely should have. And you should always like sit or stand in the most, you know, normal way possible. But I didn't want to get my new jeans full of dirt. Oh, well, um, I think I can sort of get away with that a little bit more because my game was on point and I'm so used to, to doing this that it was sort of okay. But you also see that immediately after I opened the set and opened her, I positioned myself as next to her and I sort of angled myself as next to her as opposed to standing in front of her. Um, if the girl's walking by, or even if you're in a bar, um, you definitely wanna have body language that's facing her, but you don't wanna stand directly in front of her, especially if you talk to her like on the street or somewhere, um, because in the first you know few moments of the interaction, you don't wanna block, make her feel blocked off or like you're a threat. So by like immediately saying, hey, like I wanted to come talk to you, blah, 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 and then like sort of shifting myself to the side and standing next to her, um, I'm showing like, hey, you know, not a threat. I'm a normal guy. I'm just here to talk to you. Um, and you're not sort of giving her that claustrophobic body language where she feels blocked off and she has to like go around you to escape the interaction. Uh, she can sort of move out quickly if she needs to and that sort of helps her feel more comfortable. You also notice that there are some points in here, uh, specifically just where, what you just saw, where there's a bit of extended silence in between her talking. This is actually good. 
uh, a nervous guy or an awkward guy, someone who's not really socially calibrated, would freeze up and feel awkward and be like, uh, what's happening? Or like try to rush to fill those silences. Um, but no, this is just letting her think and talk. Um, and the fact that I'm okay with the silence, I'm still there, I'm maintaining eye contact, maintaining my frame and my body language shows that you know I'm a normal guy, I can deal with social pressure, which means I'm, I'm a high value, high status guy who's confident. And you know, silences are normal. Uh, the fact that you're able to be in them comfortably, it shows that you're a cool, confident guy because you're not thrown off by a little bit of awkwardness, which you know is inherent when you're starting a, an early, brand new conversation with someone you just met. <laughs> so is, is she is she describing it for you? Is she is, is she pointing it out? Not really. She just keeps on being like, know yourself. I, I feel like that's like part of like. I imagine this is this sounds like very self helpy, right? Yeah. Like I feel like that's like a big problem with a lot of like self help stuff, is that like they tell you something, but like it lacks like the implementation or like the action to like actually do it, you know? Yeah. And it's like whenever you're talking about like improving your life like there's so much context that goes into it like this is why like people have therapists right or like people like there's like a whole field of, like psychology and like all that yeah um but i feel like a lot of the time it like lacks the content context and then they just end up repeating the same exact thing over and over again yeah, yeah. so yeah that's why i'm like very very specific about the self-help i seek out yeah do you read a lot of self-help stuff no, this is like the first one I've ever read. Really? Yeah. Who do you usually read? So this right here is the meat and potatoes of what game or, or dating is about, right? Connecting with girls and honestly getting to know them without an agenda just to see if you guys connect and, and vibe. Um, this part of the interaction may seem a little boring uh, because it's not flashy game. I'm not, you know, using all this crazy, all these crazy pickup techniques that like a lot of other guys like to do. But this is really at its core what, what dating is about. Um, just me and the girl connecting, having a playful and fun conversation that's laid back, no pressure. Um, and it's based on our shared interests. We happen to, to actually have a decent amount of shared interests and, and this girl's actually pretty cool and I connected with her well. So you can tell that the interaction flows really, really smoothly. Um, I'm like, a, I'm really into like classic romance novels. <laughs> All right. Well, no, but like, well, no, 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 no. Okay, that's enough. For, that's the last. <laughs> I'm kidding. But like, I, we're talking like literature, not like Daniel Steele. Like Hemingway. Yeah. Yeah, Hemingway. I'm into like French novels. One of my, one of the last girls I talked to is super into Hemingway. Yeah. Didn't work out so well. Oh. Which is why I'm here now talking. <laughs> <laughs> So this is really, really important. Me playfully walking away is me teasing her and having a bit of fun with the interaction. Um, but what it really shows is that I'm obviously there because I find her attractive or, or I'm into her, you know, initially to some extent, uh, but I'm still screening her. I'm not totally sold on the idea of me dating her or me even, you know, extending the interaction even forward. I'm here because I'm screening her. I'm learning about her, getting to know her, um, and I'm figuring out if she's cool and if I do like her because anytime there you're in the, in a set with a new girl you just meet you're obviously there because you find her cute or attractive or whatever um, you don't want to deny that um, but you don't want it to be that you're totally sold on her yet and ready to marry her and bought in you know and you're really into her because then it can seem a little weird and creepy because it is because in fairness you don't know her. This is why Zeus always talks about not being needy and, and, and on all of that. But what this shows is that she still has to win me over. She still has to impress me and w win me over and show me she's high qual she's a high quality person aside from you know just being pretty. Because I mean, at the end of the day, if you're gonna spend a lot of time with the girl, I would hope that you actually like her for her and her personality and what she has to offer as opposed to just her looks. And another important thing to keep in mind here is that all interactions that have good push-pull and good sexual tension need to include you screening the girl um, and have this sort of screening process of you checking the boxes to make sure she's she fits your criteria, she's cool enough for you to continue talking to um, because that's what builds that tension and uncertainty of, hmm, we kind of like each other, but we're kind of seeing if this is going to go further. I'm still sort of deciding, like, show me. And I also make a joke here about, you know, the last girl I talked to is into Hemingway and it didn't work out so well. That's why I'm here talking to you. So this joke establishes further context as to like why I'm there. Um, I basically said it didn't work out with my ex, which is why I'm here talking to you now. Uh, basically establishing that I'm there because I find her attractive or, or I like her. 
um, and I'm trying to get to know her better and see if she's a good partner. Uh, so by me walking away and me mentioning that joke, these are all sort of hints and undertones that are pretty clear and overt that, you know, I'm into her, but I'm still, you know, tell me more, show me more. It's like when you go to buy a car, like, okay, the car is cool, but, but show me more. <laughs> I, I like your jewelry though. It kind of like you. silver vibes like mine. I think I'm wearing more rings than you though. Yeah. I think I, I beat you in that, in that regard. If you're looking for good self-help, I recommend this book all the time. It's called um, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Okay. You should, it's like, are you familiar with Stoicism? No, I'm not. Girl, let, let me tell you about fucking Stoicism. It's like, I t I, it's like my favorite. It's like a philosophy, but it's also like, I hate to like sound like esoteric, but like a way of life. It's like, um, it's very philosophical, right? Like it was pioneered during like Roman times. Uh -huh. um, and it basically is like a, it talks about how like the importance of being like detached, like being detached from like your circumstances and like what you have, like being grateful for them while they're there, but being also detached so that like you're never um, destroyed by like the inevitable suffering and um, mayhem that is life. I see. And like meditations is like the most concise. It's like a super easy read too. It's only like 90 pages or something like oh, that. It's like two bucks on Amazon. Okay. You got that prime ship and oh, it's- Oh dude, I do not support Amazon. You Re gotta go to your local bookstore. <laughs> oh my, you are the worst. You're just like crossing off like all the wrong boxes. <laughs> I feel like you go to like dive bars and like request music on like their ju like jazz music on their jukebox. I feel like that's 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 who, that's the kind of person you are. I am. Again, a little bit of back and forth, just connecting with the girl. Kind of boring game stuff, not so flashy to watch. Um, but again, that's that's what it's about, like getting to know the girl and like seeing if you actually like her. And again, where I say that she's the worst here and she's checking off all the wrong boxes is me further screening her to communicate to her that like. You know, girl, you, you still gotta impress me. I still need to. Uh, I still need to see if you're the right fit. I'm still like judging to see like if if we're a good match, um, and still deciding if I like her or not, um, and want to move forward with her while you know maintaining the playful and flirty vibe throughout. And what I'm doing here is I'm playfully profiling her and putting her into this category and making fun of her. You know, just to keep furthering the frame of me screening um, and keeping the interaction fun and like that sort of me you you know, pick up, they call it man, man to woman communication or we communication um, by saying, you know, we're not going to work. Uh, this will never work. Uh, you're the worst kind of person checking off all the wrong boxes, things like that. Are you actually? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Do you, do you go out around here? Uh, not, I or mean, do you just go to like slam poetry and no, like I'm sip really like Colombian, too. like imported coffee just, that's like, like super. Me with these cliches right now. Cause you're all of these cliches. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I go like I don't, I don't. Really See there, uh, more profiling, more playing, more screening. But most importantly, this is me like setting the premise. Like, oh, do you go out a lot around here? Because I'm leading the interaction in a way where I'm gonna eventually seed me asking for her number or asking her to go out. I don't really go out that much. So there's like two sides of New York. It's like the bougie like clubs in like Midtown oh, yeah, no, and that's like cocaine promoters yeah. and after parties and then there's like dive bars and like your your I'll say your kind. I like a nice bistro. A nice bistro. <laughs> what do you get at a bistro? Nice Are you cafe. vegan? No. Ah. I, w I would have guessed vegan, but No, no, no. Don't know me as that. One of my uh my one 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 of my best friends is vegan. Really? Yeah, his name is Zeus. Uh, like, like, like the god. Like the god. Yeah, his name is Zeus. Does he look like Zeus? Like yeah, god. he does. He has like a beard and everything. I was actually supposed to meet up with him here today, but he's not. He didn't. He didn't come through. He bailed. Uh, a, a, it's a complicated, it's a complicated relationship. Zeus, the fuck, man! You got me out here doing your job, fucking hitting on girls for you. You don't pay me enough to do this. Everybody, comment right now. Send Zeus, blow Zeus up. Hashtag give Benjamin Seda a raise. You do not pay me enough to go. Pick up girls for you, do this infield, and now break it down. This is my job, man. Hashtag give Benjamin Seda a raise. So I fast forwarded and cut a little bit because, you know, giving a little bit of personal information from her and, and from me, I basically just asked her another qualifier, you know, a qualifying question. What's your story? She told me a little bit about herself, like, you know, so obviously not going to include her personal information. But again, these sorts of non-flashy parts of game, it's not like doing all these crazy techniques. It's just, you know, getting to know the girl. 
How long have you been doing for? Uh, 15 years. Really? So since you were like a like a toddler, yeah. reading. Um, did you read like like really esoteric hippie ch children's literature? No. Like the cat in the hat meets dive bar, <laughs> vegan, <laughs> gluten free uh, pizza. I did love Dr. Seuss. You did. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, th th that's cool. We can uh, we, we can bond over that. So you see when I make the the Dr. Seuss cat in the hat joke, that's me for screening her further and sort of poking a bit of fun at her and teasing her. And then when I sort of give her the fist bump and say, you know, okay, you're cool enough. We we can connect on that. That's sort of me saying, okay, you know, you you've made it this far. Let's let's keep this going further. Like I, I like you a little bit more now. In LA, it's like more bizarre, but yeah. here I feel like it's more threatening. Really? I feel the opposite. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's because like you're you're like in like the hippie scene here and like you go to like dive no. bars that are like in the basement of like a she's, laundromat. She's saying dive bars. It's true. <laughs> I feel like I would have I would have like this interaction would have happened if this interaction happened at night, I would have came up and approached you like in it, it would have had to be like a dive bar, like I'm waiting for like my friend. No, I'm more into like Again here I'm just Making a callback to the earlier jokes in the conversation, poking fun at her and profiling her, screening her as like the hippie, artsy girl, and you know, making fun of her and flirting with her throughout the way. The cafe thing where I'm like pretending that I'm French, but I'm really not. Well, I actually have to head out now, but it was great meeting you. It was so nice if to meet you, you are going to be in the area, I'm going to be around here for a while. I think you should. You should allow me to show you the nicer parts of going out in New York City. Okay. Cool. So, you don't have to put your name, I'm just going to delete it after. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> it was good okay. meeting you though. You. Enjoy your intimacy yeah. and solitude. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so basically I ended the interaction by just getting a phone number. Um, I could have tried going for the Instadate and pulling her to coffee or you know, anywhere else, somewhere somewhere nearby, like I did with the other girl. I know we didn't see that set, but I took the other girl on an insta date. Um, but I didn't feel the need to because we were already stationary, we were already sitting down. So the interaction already felt a bit more formalized. We basically had an insta date right there um, because we, you know, the interaction was 14 minutes long. Like I said, could have went for the insta date, but I didn't, I didn't feel the need to. Got the phone number, so now I can follow up and set up a date. But the important thing to realize here is that even though I had a really, really good 15 minute interaction with her, sometimes, you know, you have a really good interaction, you do an approach like this with a girl, you text them and you, you, get, you don't get a text back. Um, that was one of my biggest pain points. Uh, Zeus had this pain point for a long time too, where you would have really good sets with a girl, really good interactions with a girl. You follow up and text them and it just sometimes wouldn't work. 30% of the girls just would never respond and you'd never hear from them again after a perfectly good interaction. The reason for this drop off, the reason for these girls who seemingly just disappear after a great interaction is something that Zeus likes to call the great filter and he just made a full 20 minute video on this idea of the great filter. The, the, the gist of it is, is that girls have this filter, this wall, this guardedness um, in order to protect themselves from guys who are potential creeps or potential weirdos um, or potential threats. So they put up this great filter and their default setting, even if you're a cool guy, even if you're a high value guy, is to say no and to reject you. So you need to learn how to get past this great filter. And if you can't be in front of the girl 24 seven, then you have to do it over text. And over text, it's super hard to convey your personality and let her get to know you and see that you're a cool, high status guy. And it's so easy to just simply ignore a text message. If you wanna watch the full 20 minute video that Zeus put together for you guys on the great filter and learn how to get past this great filter, then sign up with your name and email below and Zeus will immediately be sending it to you. Literally, it's free. Just sign up and put your name and email below. And if you like that video, then you're definitely gonna like what Zeus is gonna be sending you. In addition to that, he's gonna be sending you a link to sign up for the Godly Texting Guide, which is his brand new in-depth texting course that he and I spent the past one year putting together. In the course, Zeus outlines how to go from getting the girl's phone number to literally getting her on a date in front of you, hanging out with her, getting her to hook up with you, literally step-by-step, -step, totally outlined for you, so you have to do no thinking involved. It's just a step-by-step -step process that is repeatable and is consistently getting him, me, and all of, all of our friends results. He even includes the 100 best opening lines. Literally, he gives his 100 best 
opening lines that have been working for him. So you always know how to start a text conversation. I've been using these opening lines that they've been working for me. I'm, you know, getting results in person and over text. It's even crazier. Um, he even leaked 30 of his own successful text conversations in the texting course. So watch the video first. It's free. It's 20 minutes long. Just sign up with your email. And if you like that, then you're also going to be getting a link to sign up and join the godly texting guide, the texting course. I've never seen a program or a course or videos out there like this before. This is truly one of a kind and signups are only open for a few days. Uh, I think two weeks, depending on when this video goes up, it, it might already be closed depending on when you watch this. So if you want the video, then click the link, sign up before it's too late. You know how Zeus rolls. He wants no bullshit. He doesn't want procrastinators. So if you're serious about taking your text game to the next level, because as you can see, the interaction is not the full thing. I still need to follow up with the girl in order to get her on a date with me. If you're serious about text, taking your text game to the next level, then sign up with your link below. You're gonna get the free 20 minute video. And if you like the video, then you're definitely gonna wanna sign up and join the Godly Texting Guide. The course is crazy. I will see you guys in there and I will see you guys very soon. And Snowflake just wanted to come say hi. So I'll see you guys very soon. Hashtag give Benjamin Sato a raise and click the link below and join. Zeus will be back for regularly scheduled programming very soon.